So welcome everybody. And I'm just going to do the share. Yes. Um, welcome, welcome to the Energy Play Shop. We are at number five now. So today is June the 2nd, 2022. As like before, I'm going to actually go through the outline of what we are doing this in this play shop before I go into um, talking more about the details. So just like before, I would like to you know, do a, a short welcome and then check in and do a bit of introduction and then do a presence meditation so everybody can just come just get to the same, um, just, just get back to your own body. And then I'm gonna talk a little bit about diagnosis and um, what, what it is and what I think about it. And then also talk about what mood points are. Mood points are um, particular acupuncture points that can be used for di diagnosing um, particular organs and also it can be used for healing as well so move points are really useful that's why i want to talk about move points this um, this evening so first thing first i just want to talk just want to get back to like stop sharing and then check in first and for those who don't want to be seen or because this is all recorded then then please feel free to um, just turn off your camera and change your, your name setting to whatever it is that you prefer to be known as. Okay. And um, so let's get back to this. So welcome. Um, this just want to mention that the, the, um, the last four weeks we've been playing with energy. So this workshop number five, I want to start to get into more healing. So self-healing, not talking about healing someone else. Um, I really believe that we have to heal ourselves first to, to make sure that we are in a fairly good space and, and fairly um, good health um, environment for ourselves first. So take care of ourselves just like when you when you um, go into any, uh, it, when you go ride a plane, they're gonna give you the um, what safety procedures. The first thing they tell you to do is put the oxygen mask on yourself first before you try to help someone else. So that's why you need to, Yes, everybody wants to help other people, to heal other people. First thing first, heal yourself. Because if you can do that, if you can heal yourself, then you actually start to believe that you can do it. Like if you don't, if you don't even experience the healing yourself, how are you able to have confidence that you can help someone else? So that's why first thing is to really um, get some basics foundation on how to use energy and energy principles to get your own body back into um, the state that you desire. So we, we are, our health is, health is a range. So sometimes we don't feel so healthy and then sometimes we feel a lot healthier. And, and there are so many different reasons why we feel healthy and so many reasons why we, we don't feel healthy. So um, this is just to, to start to um, move more into getting intentional because we've been playing with energy for the, the first four weeks. We're just fooling around. We're just trying to see what we can do and trying to get a better sense of experiencing energy. Now that we have some, we have four weeks of experience. So we have 
kind of a theory. It's, it's not a, a lot of foundation, but we at least have some foundation. Now we can actually get to be more intentional to use energy to start to work for us in, in, in order to command the energy that is within ourselves to work the way that we want. So that's why we're moving up to the next level. Um, now that we have played a little bit, we've kind of fooled around. So now let's get more intentional, more serious to start to look at how we can use energy to do something like heal ourselves, to make particular body parts starting to feel better, to start to move energy so that we um, overall we, we, have, we can enjoy a better state of health. So that's where this next couple of weeks we're going to do. And um, so I just want to get some feedback on our, or check in with everybody. So any questions of what we've done so far? Any, anything that, um, like if you've done any practice, then any questions? No questions? Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thumbs up. Okay, I did a great job then. If no questions, then, um, then I'm going to keep on and uh, keep going. Uh, so next thing, introduction. Okay, I don't don't actually need to actually let me um, change my view. And I actually want to um, do this. Okay, great. So now, um, introduction. Now we're, introduction is first, who am I to talk about, you know, self heal, because um, <laughs> why am I interested to talk about this? I I'm, I just want to to um, put it out there that I'm not a doctor. I'm not a guru. I am not um, I'm not a scientist. None of that. So so all I am is I'm I'm really interested in energy. I remember when I first um, experienced energy, it was actually in uh, the first workshop that I went to that I, I truly begin to feel the energy is really at a um, reconnection energy workshop, a weekend of reconnection energy workshop. And it was such a profound experience for me that just from that moment on, I was like, okay, if this is energy, then I am interested. So that's, that's how many years ago? Like that's over 20 years ago, 20 somewhat years ago. Um, I remember my kids were still um, young at that, like young at that point, like young as in under 10 years old. And they are now, I think my daughter is over 30 and, and my son is almost 30 now. So it's been a while. Um, since that time, and I am still following that breadcrumbs of energy, following my own interest in learning more about energy. And so that's where my, my interest and, and experience and expertise come from. And also on my journey to really learn about energy is that I have experience a lot of times when I can actually heal myself. I remember, um, I think I probably have, have, have shared this before in, in some other podcasts, is that there was one time where I helped somebody move. So like, so um, I actually did two, two 
like uh, for, for the one weekend, so Saturday and Sunday. So both days, I decided to help people um, um, move things around. So actually the first day, it was, um, I forgot who, it, it was really to move some um, construction materials. I have a friend of mine to, to move some um, construction material from the store to his home. And, and the next day is to help friend to another friend to, to move. And that was, that was, oh, oh my God, maybe 10, 15 years ago. So I was, a, I was a little younger then. So a lot more stamina. So that's why I, I scheduled that back to back, like two, two days of moving on the weekend for myself. So after the first day of moving, I was like, I'm going to die. How am I going to help? Um, the other friend the next day so I was just passed out so 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 tired um, after the first day of moving I just okay intentionally uh, okay I I, I have to do something because I cannot just be in this much um, exhaustion and and hope to be able to function properly the next day so so then that was what I did was I just sit down. I just sat down and after all the day's work and just focus on, I think the, 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 the part of my body that is suffering the most is my right um, elbow, arm, elbow area. So, so I was just looking at my arm and I was just intentionally sending energy there and then the intention is to heal that arm and I really feel energy moving there and um, I don't think I, I, I focused on it for too long but um, after an, a good night's sleep the next day I was like I felt absolutely it's like new, like I did not do anything on, on Saturday, like on the Sunday morning when I woke up to, to get ready to help my other friend move. I was completely 100% um, recovered. And I was absolutely surprised that, you know, whatever that energy healing I gave myself the night before, it actually worked. I was so surprised. <laughs> and then that that was of course not the only incident that I, I remember this this is much more recently as in maybe five six years ago I remember um, a, a bunch of us went to a um, went to Mexico I believe it's uh, for no Costa Rica it's Costa Rica or Mexico I forgot doesn't matter somewhere somewhere else that uh, for a, um, a Sifu Jane's um, retreat. And while I was there, there's a, a stretch of road where I have to walk from the, where I sleep to where the, um, the retreat actually takes place. So it's a stretch of maybe just a, like a five minute, not even a five minutes walk. So when I walk over there, I, the first, maybe about second day there, I fell down and really hurt my knee. So, well, this one time I was clumsy. I was wearing um, like shoes with some heels. So I thought, okay, am I bad? So it doesn't matter. Um, I, I got better another day or two. And then at two or three days later, I just fell down at around the same spot and hit my knee, my, it was my left knee, again, the same spot. And I was like, oh my gosh, how come? What was going on? And, and, my, and my left knee was beginning to give me um, some feedback, let's, let's say feedback. So I knew that I have to do something. So what happened was I really, when I got to the retreat um, place, I was a little early and not everybody was there yet. So what I did was I, I just did a healing on myself and I really sent energy from my heart all the way to my, my left, knee, left knee. And I really feel the energy moving there, healing. And I actually saw um, 
there's actually some fluids coming from my wound down um, to kind of create a, a barrier around the, the, the open wound. And I was actually feeling a lot better in, in just a couple of hours. It's, it's almost like, um, like there was really a, a healing going on. And so it's not just one time, but um, many times, time and time again, I've demonstrated to myself that I can heal my body no matter how badly I may feel. If I just intentionally um, let my body know that I want that, that part of my body to heal, I will always feel a shift. Sometimes the shift would be permanent. Sometimes I may have to do it more than once. So, however, it always, it always um, make a difference. So that's, that's, that I, I think kind of give me the, the right, or I should say the audacity to start to talk about how to heal yourself. Cause I'm, I'm speaking from experience healing myself, experience with working with energy, experience with really investigating, learning and um, following and just playing with energy for over 20 years now. So, so that's who I am and, and why I have the audacity to talk about um, healing ourselves. So the next thing I want to cover is what are we? So now that we, um, I set the intention now to talk about healing ourselves. So we have to understand what we are first. So then we kind of know what it is that we're dealing with, who, whom it is or what it is that we are trying to heal. Um, that may be a um, strange thing, but because uh, a lot of people think that we are this body. And I just want to know, to put it out there that, yes, you have a body, but you are way more than just this body. And um, I just want to actually quote Ra, um, the entity Ra, saying that we are, he, uh, in his, in the, the channeled books of, of um, Ra, he talked about that we human beings are a mind, body, and spirit complex. That, that is the, the words he used. So, and we all know of the phrase of mind, body, and soul. So why mind, body, and soul? It is, is actually, we are not just one thing. Yes, we are all, different parts of consciousness. However, consciousness has created itself into very different parts. One part is the physical body and the other part is spirit or soul. So what's the difference between soul and spirit? Um, spirit is the parts of the soul that is beyond time and space. So spirit is kind of beyond time space. And then, and then because we, our body um, exists in, in time space. So we, the, the, <clears throat> the part of the, the, the energetic parts of us that, that is here with the body that is coexisting and working through the body, we call the soul. But the soul, we have so much more than um, this time and space. We are infinite. We don't even know how infinite we are. And then mind. So what is the mind? Um, people think that we, we know what the mind is, but uh, I just want to, to put it out there that we don't even know what the mind is yet. We have theories about what the mind is, but we don't actually know what the mind is yet. The mind is much more than what we know it is. Um, 
when I say mind, I don't mean our thoughts. I don't mean just our thoughts. Our mind is actually much more than that. We don't just have access to our thoughts. We have access to all the thoughts of our neighbors, our, um, our country, our ethnicity. I'm Chinese, so I, I have access to all the, the um, thinking or thought forms that comes from people that are of the Chinese um, ethnicity. So, so when I think of mind, their mind is really fields of energy, fields and fields of overlapping energy. And within these fields of energies, there are so many different thought forms. And it is really our soul um, and body that pick and choose what some of what which one of these thought forms that we want to play with or have an experience with. Um, so we pick and choose those. And what we pick and choose, we perceive through uh, the brain. The brain is the, the, is the organ that brings in and perceive all of these thoughts. And we call all of that um, process or, or system as the mind. So that's what my understanding of the mind is. The mind is actually, I wouldn't say it's infinite, but it's much bigger than what we think we are. And that's why um, we human beings are not, um, no man is an island. It's because our mind are actually all connected to the collective. And we belong to so many different collective. We belong to the human collective. We belong to the earth collective. We also actually belong to the galactic collective. Um, we're just not too aware of that as yet. So there are so many different fields of thought forms that our mind has access to or, or our brain has access to to pull in and whatever it is that we pull in depends on our soul what we our soul is here to experience and also our body how our body is structured um, if we work with our body and partner with our body more Hmm, what's the word for it? Um, at a higher level, I should say, at a higher level, we can actually control how much and what specifically, what which band of uh, thought forms that we can bring in. So that's, that's why um, when we look at, before I look at um, healing, we have to, I just want to, to mention that when we want to heal ourselves, we have to actually understand that we are more than just this body. And that even this body, it is always changing. So our, the way our body cooperates with the mind and with our spirit is really through something that we collect, collectively call um, consciousness. So our consciousness, is really um, a combination of our mind, what we have access to, how our body is structured, how much of the, of the information that we are capable to bring in, to process and bring in, the, the wider our, um, the more um, powerful our body is, the more high level energies and thought forms we can bring in. And the more our soul is um, actualized and, 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 and nurtured our soul when we, when we are individualized, when we really become more sovereign, 
then we can actually pull in energy, pull in thought forms and um, partner with our body to a much um, bigger and wider expanse. And so that's why there are different levels of healing. We can heal something at the body level, or we can heal at a, a soul and spirit level. So there are different levels of healing. So for, for this time, I'm just going to start the most basic, and then um, we can move on from there. So what I've talked about, so mind, body, and spirit. And um, partnering with our body. So I've done actually a, a lot of things uh, over the past four weeks. That's why I, I did the, all of that. Um, the introduction to this is really to, to partner with our body as we as we do let's say the body tracing we're actually partnering with our body and when i do the when i um, talked about scanning the body just move and uh, a plane of energy down to feel how the body is is really partnering with our body as well so there are um, so all of the past four weeks you can look at it as um, ways to partner with our body or to deepen that partnership with our body. And um, so this is the, so when we get into healing ourselves, it's also another deeper layer of partnering with our body. Okay, so this is kind of the introduction that I want to talk about. And before I go on, I would like to actually just take everybody through a kind of a presence meditation, just to allow everybody to let go of everything that I've just talked about and everything that, um, how your day has been so far, what have been confusing you or occupying you for, the like from this morning on until you know this is eight quarter to to nine now so let's just do a presence meditation so let's just close your eyes and just take a deep breath in And let go, breathe out very slowly, as slowly as you possibly can. And then just repeat that, to breathe in slowly. And fully inflate your lungs and then slowly breathe out. And then one more time, this time, breathe in through your nose, your nostrils. And breathe out through your nostrils as well. And continue to follow the rhythm of your own breathing with the intention of slowing down your breath as much as it is still comfortable for you. And as you are focusing on your breathing, imagine that as you breathe in, you are calling back all parts of yourself. Call back all the energetic parts of you, all the attention that you have been focusing outside of you, thinking about what's going on in the world today, what's going on in your life today. 
what's going on in your body today, all of those attention that you've been sending out. Now bring it all back in. For the moment, just focus within. Bring back all of your attention to yourself. And call back all parts of yourself to you. Call back all of the energetic parts of you back to your physical body. And as you do that, feel that shift in your body. Notice what your body feels like when you have all parts of you back in your body. And when you notice that shift, then you can open your eyes and come all the way back into the room. Okay, welcome back. Thank you, Vinny. You're welcome. So let me now share screen and talk about the next thing. Next thing is really the prime directive of the body. So I already mentioned that we have different parts and I forgot to mention that each part of you, the mind, the body, and the spirit, we have different directives. And since we are talking about healing the body, so I just want to mention, what is the prime directive of the body? Very simple. The prime directive of your body is to keep you alive. So that means that you, the, your body is going to do whatever it takes to make sure that your heart is working and your brain is working because you need your heart to be working in order to pump blood and take, and take oxygen all over your body. Otherwise, you will not be alive for long. And you need your brain because um, your brain makes a lot of decision to keep your body out of harm. So as long as those two organs, um, so your body will do whatever it takes in order to protect those two organs, your heart and your brain. And if you're a woman, you have one more directive too. And that is procreation. Because procreation is about um, making sure that the next generation, which is an, kind of like an extension of you. So, so the next gener generation will be able to have the next generation. So that is what... Um, a human, uh, a woman needs to, uh, besides being able to have a heart, healthy heart and a brain is to be able to procreate. So a woman kind of has two and a half prime directive. So that's, that's the prime directive of the body and everything that a body does, even though it may seem completely incomprehensible to your mind. However, to the body, the most important thing is to make sure your heart beats because you will still be alive. So as long as you are still alive, you can still take actions to change your reality, to create a different um, experience for yourself. So that is the prime directive of your body. So before we, before we can heal the body, we, can, we have to know, know what to heal. So 
I want to talk a little bit about diagnose. <laughs> so why did I say don't do it? <laughs> That's because, um, let, let me just, um, quit sharing is um, don't doing, why, why don't diagnose is, a diagnose is, in, remember I talk about that the mind um, has access to different fields of thought forms, so the fields of energy and thought forms, so because we have been doing, we have been studying the body for a while, and we've been diagnosing, like, let's say, different illness, like you have um, kidney failure or cancer or a heart attack, those, those are diagnoses. So each diagnosis has a field of experience already associated with it that's been, um, that's been growing with millions, or well, millions of human beings lifetime after lifetime, um, putting into this, all, all their experience and thought forms into a diagnosis. So when you, when you work with a diagnosis, you have to understand something is that there is a field of energy associated with each diagnosis. So when you're trying to heal yourself, you are in fact, you know, you are going against this field of diagnosis. So it's, it's um, especially like something that is more, um, I would say threat, life-threatening like cancer. It's like, well, it's pretty intimidating to think that me, little old me can fight against all these millions of people who have experienced cancer. Um, so this is, that's why I say don't diagnose and also don't try to work against the diagnosis. You may, you may go to a doctor and get a diagnosis, but once you get one, um, I suggest that you don't try to go against it. Don't try to say, oh, I am trying to recover from the big C or whatever it is, because you are, it's your energy um, trying to heal something that has a much bigger access of energy field outside of you. So I'm not saying that it's not possible. I'm just saying that it, it, you're unnecessarily making it harder for yourself. So what I would suggest you to do is really Go with your body. Go with your body. It's, your body has different organs. So check in your organs and say, are you doing well? If you're not doing well, how can I help you? So that is much easier than going against a field of um, experiences that's been um, passed down generations of generations to you. So that's, that's what I want to talk about in a, about diagnosis. I'm not saying that diagnosis is bad. Um, I'm just saying that, yes, go get a diagnosis if that makes you feel better. But once you get it, you have to let it go. Yes, let go of trying to heal yourself of a particular diagnosis. Your body is not a diagnosis. A uh, diagnosis is kind of like a, a set, um, um, like a, just a label. Your body is a living organism and there is, your body is capable of bringing in limitless possibilities. So work with your body and you have limitless possibilities. And the next thing I want to talk about is, so how do we work with the body? So then um, that's where I want to bring in more points. 
So moo points are really acupuncture points, but specific acupuncture points. So we have a heart, we have liver, we have stomach and all that. And within our body, there are different meridian points that brings energy to those organs. So each organ has um, at least one mu point. So the mu points are point a, a specific part in the body where energy for that for that specific organ will converge and come together to bring energy to that organ. So those are called mu points. So the mu points think of it that as being the um, like important points. So there are twelve frontal mu points all together. There are mu points at the back, but because when we are working with um, finding out which part of the body to work on first, we cannot access our back very easily. So I'm only going to talk about the front mu points. So let's bring up the front move points. Let me just find that. Okay, here, this is, these are the move points. Okay. And where to find them? So let me just do this first. So the first one is lung. So let's just check the lungs. This one finger width below the depression at the bottom of the lateral end of the clavicle. That's a lot of words. So what is what is the clavicle? So this part here is the clavicle. And if you touch your body, you would notice that there is a bone that is right at the bottom of your neck. And that so follow that bone until you get to almost the end of it. So just before where the, 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 red, the arm uh, connects to it. So that's the end of the clavicle. So one finger down. So just finger, just measure one finger below that. That is lung. So the so that's where that is. And I want to kind of just um, check with everybody. So, okay, so if you, so this is my, um, okay, so you can see that this is kind of where I have the, the bone. So you just follow that bone to towards the end. And then you just measure one finger width below. And that's where that is. So when you press that point, how do you feel? So that is the lung one point. So everybody clear about where that is yet? Yep. Okay, so, so the lung has, um, both sides, so your your so you have one on this side, which is my right side, and then once you find the right side, and you so what you notice, what you notice is when you touch it. So don't just you know don't just touch. Um, so don't dig into it, but just have a somewhat firm touch and feel how it feels. Does it feel? Nothing. So meaning that you know, it's not sore, it's this, you just don't feel anything. Or maybe if you feel tender, then that's an abnormal, that, that indicates that the, the right lung is abnormal. There's something going on energetically. Or if you touch it, you feel this comfortable feeling, meaning that, oh, this is so good, comfortable then you know it's also an abnormal feeling. So normal is you touch it, 
you don't really have much of a feeling. Then you know that, okay, right lung is good. Okay, so it depends on how you feel when you touch that, that point. Okay, so, and now fine on the other side as well. So, cause you have two lungs and the energy goes into your lungs from both sides of the body. So do the same thing, fine, follow that bone to the end and then measure one finger with the low and touch that and see what you feel. Okay, it's a little bit of weight when you touch it, but not digging it in. Because if you dig it in, of course, you're gonna feel something, but just, yeah. Okay, just, so just feel that. Okay, so far so good. <laughs> Okay, so that's the lung. So you know whether your, like which side um, is normal, tender or comfortable. So what does tender mean? So normal means everything is good, no need to do anything. Tender means that it is um, overworked. That means that that meridian point is overworked. That's why it's giving you that tender feeling. And when you feel this comfortable, it's like, ah, oh, this is so good. That kind of comfortable feeling, then you know that you, you don't have enough energy. So it's a lack, it's a lack. Um, tender usually means it's overworked, whereas comfortable, it actually means that it's under functioning. It's, it's not, uh, so it's, it's really lacking in energy. So that's what each of these um, means. So far so good. So now you know which, um, whether your lungs need help or not. So now, um, before How I- about you feel the pulses? Hmm? If you feel the pulse, when you put like this and then you feel the pulses of your lung. Like you can feel something. I'm not particularly sure whether that is actually the pulse of the lung because um, it could be. Um, what what was I again? Sorry, I missed that. Yeah, or just maybe just pushing the wrong place. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes. You you would um feel that there is a pulse as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for, for bringing that up, yeah. Um, so when you touch that point, actually just take some time to find the right point because this description may not be, it's, it's kind of um, best guess. So everybody's body is a little different you may need to maybe shift around a little bit. And you know, when you find it is you actually, there is a pulse there. Okay. <clears throat> so what can you do? If it is overworked, if it's, it has been overworked, then the I think the, the best thing to do is to kind of massage that area counterclockwise. So just not too much. Um, so just slightly massage that area counterclockwise. If you feel tender there, if you feel really oh, comfortable, just bring it more in, then you massage that area clockwise. So clockwise is really you are bringing energy in. Okay, and counterclockwise is if you if your if that organ is overworked, then you're trying to 
unload that. So you're trying to take some energy out to balance that. Question, any questions so far? You know where to find the, the long meridians and what to do, All right? Okay, great. Well, let's continue then on the next point. Next point is the large intestine. Large intestine, the move point for to check out how your large intestine is doing is two fingers besides the navel. So let's take a look at what it looks like. Large intestine. So it is two fingers with Okay, this is no, hang on. to the navel. So large intestine, two fingers with lateral to the navel. So it's two fingers with. So this is the large intestine. So it's this is the from the navel. This is two fingers. So one finger, two fingers. And that's the large intestine. That's how to find it. Okay, so let's 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 do that. Let's find that. Let's find that on the right side, and then we can find that on the on the other side again. So kind of know where you know where your navel is, right? Where your belly button is. So you just measure two fingers width. And that's where your large intestine. So two fingers up. Lateral. So that's, it's okay. Yeah, which, to which the side. side. Which side? Any Both side. sides. Because large intestine, their energy coming in from both sides. So there's one on the right, and there's one on the left. Okay. I'm so sure of the left. It's two fingers width from the navel. Yeah. Just to let touch on, no, no. Two fingers pointing down from the navel. Um, what's that? Sorry. I was saying it's like two fingers pointing down from the navel, each side of the navel. Yeah. You put two fingers width and then you put your finger in the spot after the finger, two fingers, and yes. that is the spot, yeah. Yeah, that's the spot. So you so just- I use my uh, two long fingers, and then with the third ring finger, I can find the spot next to it. Yes, so, so you- put two fingers to the side and two fingers down? So put two fingers up, Astoria, when you can't see me. Yeah, two fingers, look, let her, two fingers to each side of your navel, mm -hmm. like this pointing down and then uh -huh. you use that third finger and you'll find the point okay. next to it. Thank you. Yeah. So when you find it, touch it and feel how it feels. If it feels, does it feel normal? Does it feel tender? Or does it feel like, oh, this is so good, comfortable? Okay, so while you add it, then if it needs adjustment, then you know that for feeling tender, you have to go counterclockwise. And if it is you're feeling comfortable, that means it is lacking energy, then you have to go clockwise to bring more energy in. And now you can actually do the other side. 
So do the left side. Find out where your, so your belly button and then two fingers and then just to the side. Oh, to the left. And then just press on that. And figure out, is it normal, tender or comfortable? Any questions about um, this point? Okay, let's move on then. Um, stomach. Uh, yep. Can I ask you a question, please? So sure. when we touch um, that, we also do counterclockwise first and then clockwise? No. It depends on how you that point feels. If it feels tender, then mm -hmm. counterclockwise. If it feels comfortable, that means it um, it's lacking energy. Then clockwise, you massage it clockwise until it gets to normal again. Okay. So it depends on how it feels. Okay. Thank you. Great. So I am. Um, so stomach. Stomach is four fingers width below the tip of the sternum. So what is the sternum? Um, so if you, let's see, let me stand up first. So if you kind of find where your You can touch and find where the tip, for me, this is the tip of my sternum. So four fingers width below. So it is there. That is, that is for me, the stomach. Four fingers width below the tip of the sternum. Question so far? In fact, it's, uh, it's uh, four fingers uh, above the belly button. Um, not necessarily. Almost, no, it's yeah. More. Almost. It's, it's more. Oh. It depends on your finger size. Yeah. All right. For me, it's like a whole hand size. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It it depends on. Uh, you didn't show us the diagram. Yeah, let me show you the diagram now. Okay, so stomach. So is this it is right this point. Mm. So it is okay. four fingers below the sternum. Mm. Okay, that is. Is is the sternum kind of that indent? Um, <laughs> if you you just find the so you find. Yeah, the indent is where it ends. Yeah. It's and they are showing the hot point the over there. The, that's the hot point. And then below that is the stomach. So it is four fingers below the sternum point. End of the sternum. Did that help? Yes, thank you, Winnie. Okay. Because right. I get all the acupuncture points, so I know that's why. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> so, so far, I, I think I'm, I'm doing okay. <laughs> so far, I haven't had too many points that are too tender or, or one way or another. So okay, let's see what's the next point. Uh, heart. Okay, heart is two fingers with below the tip of the sternum. 
So let so let me just share screen to find out where that is. So this is this one is the heart. So about two fingers width below the tip of the sternum. And that's where the heart is. And I know my heart is okay. Yeah. Spleen, I know it's it's not okay because <laughs> I've checked. <laughs> it hurts. <laughs> But so far, so far, these couple of ones are pretty good for me. Standard, so I do counterclockwise, right? Yes, tender is counterclockwise. Okay, so let's move on. So small intestine is four fingers width below the navel. Okay. Four fingers width below the navel. So you know where your navel is? So four fingers width below. So that, that is easy enough that I'm going to show that. So this is small intestine. So four fingers width below the belly button, the navel. So that's approximately where that is. Okay, so far so good? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So next one, the bladder. Five fingers width below the navel. So that, that one, this one is easy too. So this one to right, right below the, uh, the small intestine, that is the bladder. That is easy too. So next one, kidney. Oh, what happened? I skipped the spleen. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I didn't even show the spleen. I was uh... okay. So this, let's let's go back up to number four, the spleen. So the spleen is on the side. So there are two points. Um, like all this is, is from Sifu James. And actually a lot of these you can you can Google um, Moo points. Moo points are are well known. So you can actually Google Moo points and you would get these as well. So liver 13. So the abdomen blah 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 but the note is for better result we use spleen 21 which is one hand with below the axilla axilla on the mid auxiliary line so what does that mean <laughs> so this is gb25 so oh no this is it is the spleen spleen okay Spleen 21, spleen 21 is this one here that we want. So um, let me, so, so let me, I kind of, I have to show you. So the spleen, um, so one hand width, so one hand width, so you measure from the, below your, the, your armpit, so one hand width, is there, and then it's right here. So it's not to completely to the side. It's kind of halfway between the front, halfway between the front and the side. So this half. Oh, okay, I'm disappearing here. <laughs> so it's kind of around here. That is. That is. Isn't it, isn't it between ribs? Oh, and the other picture showed just below the last rib. It's really sensitive. <laughs> yes, for me too. It's very sensitive, the spleen. Me three. Oh, this is, yeah, this spleen is between the ribs. Spleen 20, 20 yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, spleen 21, right here. Because there's another spleen at the bottom. Yeah. Spleen liver. 
Yep, there are two points. And uh, Sifu James mentioned that 21 is the better one to use. So I'm going to talk about the 21. But, yeah, both points. For me, I've, I've checked the, the liver 13 as well. They are both sore. So, <laughs> so there's no mistake that I need to work on my spleen. So you find it on one side and you also find it on the other side. So, so you, you, you check on the other side. For me, the other side is slightly better. The one on the right side is really sensitive, which makes sense because I have a sweet tooth. So <laughs> my spleen is not, is overworked. So that's, that's, that's me. So that's my bad. So, so far so good in terms of the spleen. Mm -hmm. Have I confused everybody yet? <laughs> yeah, so so the people have got a diabetics, they have got a problem with the spleen. Is it yeah. overwork or underwork? It depends on how long they have it. Usually it's right. overwork first, and then if they don't do anything, then it will start to get to be low. Low, okay. Yeah, so it depends on what it is. So try to catch it when it's tender. Don't try to catch. When you catch it earlier, it's easier to reverse. So, so then counterclockwise massage the spleen point counterclockwise until it feels normal again. It may take a while. <laughs> so the, the, the thing is you when you do the, the checking, you kind of put down what it is that you need to work on and then you can um, go back and work on. Okay, so spleen, so great. So I've covered the spleen. So we talked about heart, small intestine, that kidney. So yeah, yes, now we are on kidney. So kidney. On the lateral side of the abdomen, on the lower border of the 12 free floating rib. Huh? <laughs> so let me just show what the picture talks about. So it is this little picture here that you have to, so I'm gonna move it down a little bit. So it's, this is the side view. So if you look at, this is GB25. So, so you have both left and right side. So on the, uh, on the right side, you kind of find the last rip, last rip and find the last rib. And that's where uh, on the side. So that is, that's where it is, okay? Mine is definitely sensitive, <laughs> tender on my right side. Once you found it on the right side, then you can find it on the left side as well. Yeah, they both they both needs work. So for me anyways. Can you repeat how you find it? Okay, so let's let's read the words again now that we kind of know where it is. Kidney on the lateral side of the abdomen. So lower body border of the 12 free rib. Okay, so let, let me explain. So this, this is my abdomen, kind of feel, uh, it's hard to say. So I kind of feel where the, the last rib is. Last rib is, feel that. So it's kind of still in the front. Um, but on the side, so it's not, it's not all the way here, but it's kind of here. So it's around where your tummy is. So you find find that rib, your last rib, and that's so kind of where it is. And there's a rib, right? Yeah. So one side, when you find it on one side. Yeah. 
you know, when, when you go below the breastbone, the last rib, and it's a little sore there, but then you go to the right of it or left of it on both sides, then you'll find that top part. It's slightly away from the center. Mm -hmm. More to the side. Okay. Tatiana got it? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Everybody got it? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yeah. yeah. Any, I definitely need work on both sides for the kidney. <laughs> okay. So let's, so far, so good. Okay, so pericardium. Midway way between the two nipples. Okay, so let's take a look at the picture. Uh, let's see the picture. Pericardium. So this. So when they say the nipple, they don't mean well for women anyway. Depending on how how old you are. Your nipple may not be at the, the when when they say nipple, they mean the pre when when you are a young girl, where the, the nipple is. As you get older, you well, things may have shifted a little. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's what I'm trying to say. So don't look for your nipple now. Just <laughs> so that is. Oh, it is. So that is where that is. So, so it's kind of here. Pericardium. Like on the sternum, yeah? It's what? On the sternum. On the sternum, yes. Yeah, yeah. On the sternum. Okay, everybody got the uh, pericardium? Mm -hmm. It's a good thing my pericardium seems to be okay. Not tender, nothing, just normal. Okay, triple warmer. Triple warmer is easy. Three fingers width below the navel. So belly button, everybody knows where their belly button is. Three fingers below, that's the triple warmer. And let's take a look at the picture. That's the triple warmer. This one here. Everybody good with that? <laughs> so okay. it's above. It's above the um, belly button, right? No. It is three fingers width below the belly button. How come every spot hurts on me? <laughs> okay. You are kind of a little stressed then. How how hard are you pressing in? I like did I, I mention not not to dig deep in. Everybody okay so far? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So next one is for gallbladder. What if I don't have gallbladder? It was removed. Yes, but your the meridians are still there. Yep. So nipple line down at the the space between the seventh and the eighth rib. Okay. So what does that look like? Mm 
gallbladder. So this one here. Between the seventh and the eighth rib. So this one here. Okay. So it is. So find your nipple line and then it is. Yeah, mine is actually a little bit tender. Just send us these attachments with the video when you're tender. Excuse me, what, what did you say? Can you send these attachments? These oh, of course, yes, yeah. yes. Good help, thank you. Yeah. Okay, everybody got that? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Now liver, liver is right. It's just, after you found the, the gallbladder, the, the, you just have to go up one rib and that's your liver. Okay, so that is the description is space between the sixth and the seventh ribs. So you just have to go up one rib and that is, you found your liver point. And remember the gallbladder and the liver, they both have left and right side. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those are the 12 moon points. Mm -hmm. 12 moon points. And you can use these 12 move points to find out which, because these 12 move points kind of cover the 12 most major parts of the organs, the major organs. So when you've checked all of these, you have a general idea what's, what's um, going on inside your body. And so that is, and they're not just, um, they tell you what is going on, but it's also you can do some healing just from there. As I've mentioned, if it's tender, that means it's overworked, then you massage it counterclockwise. And if it's like, um, if you feel really comfortable having that, oh, it's so good kind of feeling, then that means that 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 energy is really exhausted and low in energy then you massage it clockwise to start to alleviate and and um, get more energy to that part of your body so far so good mm -hmm. Okay, great. <laughs> Any questions? Any comments before we do the meditation? Thank you for finding all our source spots. <laughs> <laughs> Not easy. <laughs> Okay, great. Um, in that case, I'm going to stop the recording.